Hi, welcome to the Israel First Television program from our studios in Jerusalem. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us across the world. We really appreciate your company. And thank you so much for everyone who makes the program possible. We really appreciate your financial support. And uh, you can go to our website where you can help us to continue the Israel First Television program. We're the program that looks at the news, we look behind the news, and we look at the Hebrew roots. We also look at what's happening in the, in the streets of Jerusalem and uh, coming up to the redemption. And I think Natalie's going to be talking a bit about that uh, today. Well, we uh, have been talking for the last few programs about the, uh, the Gaza war situation behind the scenes. Uh, if you want what's happening in actual, in actual uh, things that are happening in Gaza, you will have to look at the mainstream media. We wanted to give you what's happening to the average Israeli now. Um, where are we at? Well, that's a very good question. And uh, thank you for asking me. Uh, pres let's just look at what the Prime Minister says yesterday. That's the Israeli Prime Minister, by the way. Uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu who said... Israel was determined, this is in a press conference in Jerusalem, Israel is determined to achieve victory in the ongoing conflict with Hamas. And as I mentioned last time in the programme, not sure quite how you can have a complete victory against a, um, ideology. A, an ideology, a way of thinking, not, not just um, a country, but a way of actual, it's a whole ideology, a whole religion really, and uh, how you can do that. Not quite sure, but anyway, that's what he says, that he's looking to achieve victory. And he went on to achieve, uh, say uh, he's looking to achieve the goals of the war. He was the first one to mention it on the 7th of October, the war, in a matter of months. This is uh, yesterday. Uh, let me just tell you what he said in January. Uh, I did say this on the programme. Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told local council chiefs from the communities near Gaza, the southern Israeli communities who were affected on the 7th of October, that he anticipates Hamas extend, uh, the war against Hamas extending into 2025, a bit different. And that was only a month ago. So uh, is it going into 2025 or is it a matter of months? Well, that's up to you to decide because... We seem to be getting conflicting news, Natalie, all the time from the mainstream media. More more. They're saying one thing one day and they're saying something else the next. Now, something I've spoken about it before, and it's something very, very important for you to appreciate, is the role of AI in news. I have spoken about this uh, artificial intelligence, and it's very important that you know so you can understand um, what's happening with all of the um, so-called videos, etc., that are coming out, and press conferences. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is becoming, or is, I should say, the next technology revolution. AI-generated fakes, that is, um, you think you're seeing the person, but it's actually an, uh, an artificially generated version of them, have grown increasingly difficult to discern as the technology has improved. Really, it's improved beyond all recognition. And um, um, deep fakes, which is the technical name for this technology, has grown around the world. Some form of AI is already in your life, whether you like it or not. For example, grammar suggestions when you're on a word processing, when you're doing word processing on an email or facial recognition on some of the phones that people use or fingerprints or whatever, or even facial recognition in uh, trains or in airports. This is uh, artificial intelligence at work. Now, uh, AI in the media is, is really a problem because we don't know now, and we spoke about this before, who is real and who is not real when we're looking at videos and news articles and we can't tell what's been generated by AI and what's... But you are real. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this well, is important to know. Well, yeah, exactly. But then how would you know that? But yes, we are, we are, we are real coming to you today. But, but you're right. I mean, like even for cinema now, 
for movies, <laughs> they need the person only for a certain time and they do different expression and all of that and it's all in the computer and then they can do a film with this per with this person's film that they recorded. So it's like it's, you can do so many things now which is not with the real person. Right, and and if you talk to any journalist, they or they will tell you about AI and uh, and the deep fakes and set etc. and articles that are being generated by artificial intelligence. I should say, by the way, uh, some computer generated articles are interesting to read because it's interesting to see what they put together. But that doesn't stop the problem of AI becoming increasingly and increasingly the main news provider. Uh, by the way, we talked about redundancies at Ynet in Israel a while ago, and um, they are one of the companies who are looking at AI. And so um, it's, uh, and we're saying that people were saying, local Israelis were saying that it was because of that and that they should... were losing staff. You're right, and that is what uh, Noah Harari is saying, that man is not really needed anymore. Right. They have enough things in their computers to be able to fake a real human. So they don't need a, a useless math. Yeah, so this is part of the end times. It's part of the, yeah. the path to redemption is part of this uh, taking over of the media. Uh, we talked about censorship before and, and AI and C. Uh, by the way, CNET, which is uh, in Israel, um, actually talks about using AI. Some people actually boast about it, Natalie, and they, um, they talk about AI-powered tools that can deliver, deliver articles or reports that have traditionally been by a journalist. Um, and, uh, you know, many people are saying that it is a problem. Uh, Angela Quintel of the Committee to Protect Jour Journalists Programme coordinator told Voice of America there's no doubt that elements of AI in, are indeed a threat to journalists or journalism. What we have seen is the use of artificial intelligence to uh, do what is called supercharging, uh, super information, uh, sending out uh, lots of information. We don't know what's right and what's wrong. And uh, journalists can be targeted even. Uh, it's really putting a huge pressure on the media industry that it's cheaper to use computers than actual people. And uh, this is something that's happening in Israel. And so you need to know about that. Um, Sadim Marung, a director of Reporters Without Borders said, in recent months, we have seen something to the quality, we've seen something more or less threatening the quality of journalism. Some people are using artificial intelligence to jeopardize or undermine the findings and revelations by professional journalists. So it's adding to all the huge, massive information that's been thrown at people. Um, it's difficult for ordinary users of social media to actually realize they are being played by propagandists. The Jerusalem Post just last August said that Israel's ACT News had unveiled AI-powered news via digital presenters. They are no longer the actual presenter themselves, but a digital version. I have mentioned this in the program, but it's important that you know about this. <clears throat> it will help you understand some of the issues that we're facing trying to gather news that we are dealing with this digital AI situation. And a ACT News claims that it's the world's first AI automated news edition presented by digital avatar clones. Um, it's uh, a digital version of the per person. Um, the people are Miriam Michele and Amit Siegel representing a shift in the news paradigm. This is already uh, a news channel sending out information, um, but there are ethical considerations. Exactly, I was um, just thinking about that. Because... We're blurring the line between yes. human reporters you see, the problem is they're not just using digital reporters, they're mixing it all up. They're using themselves plus digital reporters. So it's difficult to know, is it a digital reporter or is it the human person? And it's very challenging for viewers to discern which is which. Which uh, is at the source is like you can control things. Right. You can be 
like the the AI can be in control of what or what kind of information is given to the public, and the public thing that is real information when is AI information which can have some truth but which is not all the truth and they're controlling all the information which is very interesting because it's like when we speak about being on the road of redemption when you look deeply in the story of Egypt and the Hebrew people this was exactly that Egypt was in control of the world and um, we will speak about that later on yeah uh, it's it's uh, interesting to see that in Israel, only 22%, and maybe not even that, are expressing trust in the media according to the 2022 Israel Democracy uh, Index survey. Uh, the survey showed that trust in is in the media has been uh, dropping. And um, Mayan Jaffe Hoffman, she's the deputy CEO of Jerusalem Post, said if AI puts journalism under existential threat, then it also places democracy and the future of free societies at risk. So um, this is something that we're facing. And it's interesting that a lot of issues have surfaced during the current Gaza war because a lot of things are happening and that nobody can discern what is it AI that we're dealing with? Is it a real person that we're dealing with? And all these type of questions are coming out at this time, Natalie. And Israel, like we say in the program, Israel first. Israel is the first, so it's first here that we're having is these big issues with AI. Um, <clears throat> one of the other issues that uh, we're facing is uh, the um, sanctions of the United States have recently been mentioned against Israeli citizens. And the Times of Israel has reported that uh, Israeli banks have frozen the accounts of Israeli citizens without any evidence of wrongdoing. Bank, in other words, that there's no proof of anything. No, there's pr no proof that the person who has been targeted, whose account has been frozen, uh, has done anything wrong. Bank Lumi targeted Yinon Levy, one of four Israelis whose bank's accounts have been frozen, despite the fact there's no proof of any misconduct. Bank Lumi informed uh, Israeli citizen Yunon know, that his accounts in Israel have been frozen. Action was taken on unsubstantiated allegations. Can News reported that he had two bank accounts, one a personal one with his, with his wife and then a business one with his brother. A uh, member of Knesset, uh, Suvi Sukhart, visited him and noted that there is no evidence of any allegations, there's no indictment, criminal records, there's nothing. All it is, is allegations from left-wingers. It makes no sense at all for an Israeli bank just to freeze the accounts of someone who is the salt of the earth because of leftist libel. This is illegal and no one has authority just to freeze someone's bank account. So this is really setting a very dangerous precedent in the middle of the war, in the middle of all the things, the AI, the surveillance and everything like that. Everything that's going on, we suddenly get this situation with banks uh, di uh, freezing people's accounts um, willy-nilly. And uh, Finance Minister Bezel Smolkris responded to Bank Lumi's decision, he said, I'm saddened by the anti-Semitic campaign against settlers. Um, it doesn't really matter who they are. They happen to be settlers, but it, it could have been anybody, which is then transferred to the American administration which aligns with this campaign. Uh, we are not a banana republic of the United States, he said. This is the uh, Israeli uh, finance minister. Um, National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Gavir said, restricting the bank accounts of residents without explanation and justice is crossing a red line. That should not be allowed. I mean, that's common sense, really, that uh, they can just close accounts so, without any. It's, without it's any your money in your account, right? And suddenly, it's not your money. Anymore. And I, and I think this is a bigger issue, and and I'll just bring that up, and then Natalie has a lot to share with you. But there's a bigger issue that uh, we are finding in Israel with the war going on, uh, that companies or or associations or government agencies or whoever are now doing things willy-nilly, doing the things their own, doing their own thing without any regard to the people or customers or anybody. 
So this is a new thing that um, gone are the days when the customer was king. So, yes. uh, Natalie, I know that you've got some important things to share about the redemption. And it, all of these things are on the road. Yes. They're all part of it. Yes. Now, I want, we carry on speaking about redemption. I want to tell you also about if you want to find a wonderful, amazing book, The Last Slave, and it's from Ko Mornik. And it's the story of the redemption. It's the story of Egypt and the Hebrew people. And is packed of information that she has gleaned when she was writing the book. So you have the story, then, which is kind of a, a romance, I mean, not romance, like a, like a story. But at the end of the book, you have all the, where is written in the Bible or in like the sages, the Jewish sages, what they are saying, his story and all of that, and give really uh, a story of what was happening in Egypt, which is just amazing. Because when, again, reading that, I finished the book now, I was amazed to see, oh, this is what's happening now. Oh, this is what's happening now. Oh, this is what's happening. COVID, the taxes, they, they, they use, they are saying the things. The lockdowns in Egypt. Yeah. That you couldn't move anywhere or go any or leave or exactly. do anything. Exactly. When you were speaking about AI, one of the things is like they have magical trick that nobody could get out of Egypt. It's like when somebody was going, they knew uh, they had, because magic was very high at, in, in Egypt. It was interesting because Joseph came and, and Egypt was used for saving a lot of people. But at the same time, they have this sorcery, which was amazing. And again, I'm learning things like Bilam was also in the court of uh, Pharaoh. Job was in the court of Pharaoh and Yitro was in the court of Pharaoh. And all of that is like, you are discovering so much of what was happening during that time and we are saying i've told you many many years ago it was 1997 i was reading funny enough the story of exodus and god spoke to me saying this is going to happen to the world like it happens to the hebrews it will happen to the world before the final redemption before that the kingdom of god will come onto the earth okay and now we are in it if you want it or not, if you see it or not, we are 100% in it. Now, one of the things, Egypt has not finished because Egypt was the power of Freemasonry. So now when you see the Freemasonry around the world, this is what we will call Egypt, all right? is the power of Egypt, Freemasonry. And when you see things happening behind the scene, this is from them and they are using exactly the same tools exactly the same tricks the when you read in exodus and that books the last slave is just just amazing so i wanted also to tell you a bit because it's like when you read exodus 6 6 is the beginning of when moses come and uh, which is again a, an amazing story how he was kept alive because pharaoh wanted to kill uh, all, the, all the, I mean, was killing all the boys because they knew again by the stair gazers that the Messiah, the Redemptor will come, the Redeemer will come for redeeming the Jewish people. They were also having a lot of children. And again, it's all written. When, you see, I've told you many, many times, you need to read very carefully uh, the Torah, the Bible, and when you can read it more and more with like English and Hebrew, there is so much in it that there is so many clues and is giving us also the understanding of what's happening now is so important. Now, four steps of redemption, okay? It doesn't just arrive like that. It's like something happened. First one, God is taking us out of the burden of Egypt. So Egypt, again, is Mitzrayim, and Mitzrayim means a narrow place. So we are in a narrow place. 
they have taxes on us. They are pushing us in the corner and all of that. So we are under Egypt, which is, if you look behind all the story, a lot of it is Freemasonry, okay? Second time, and God is going to take us, free us of all their power. God have to rescue us from their service, okay? Because we are slave and we are going to be redeemed. Third one, he redeemed us with his outreach, outreach arm, which means he, he is the power, okay? They think that they have power because give, God let them have some power. But the ultimate power is God, okay? And he redeemed us with the out, outstretched arm and he is judging them. And there is judgment coming, okay? And we start to see it. There is a lot of things said about children who are used and abused and a lot of other things that are put into light now because we are going to see the judgment which is coming from God. And the last one, he take us to himself for people and he shall be our God. So again, when, when he say, you know, you will be my people, is to serve him, is to be with him, is to this relationship. So we are coming under the hand of Egypt where we are slave and now we are coming into a relationship. And interesting enough, the Jewish people said that when God gave the Torah, which was the ultimate purpose, it was like a ketubah, it was like a contract marriage. It was their way coming together. Okay, so this is amazing. Now, another little thing. Please, 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 start to read the Bible like with some Jewish understanding. Find there is more and more Bible who are giving also how the Jewish people read every year. They read a portion of the five first book and it's packed and full of commentaries to understand the behind and what God is doing and his pattern and his wisdom and all of that. Please try to find books about that because it's so important. You just go uh, on your computer and you find some Jewish com uh, uh, commentaries on the first five books and you will see, you will start to understand so much treasure. Now, one of the thing, uh, in Exodus 13, is cool because they, every time they have like a title for the portion that they are reading, and that one is called Bechalar, which is very interesting because very often we say that Pharaoh say, let my people go, okay? I want your comment. No, no, I wanted... you, they uh, say to Pharaoh, let my people yes, go. Yes, sorry, yes. But the thing is, he said Bechalar is like Pharaoh sent out the people. Right. So uh, I was saying to Natalie that um, there's a big difference between um, letting someone go and sending them away. Uh, if you let someone go, you've made the decision. You let them go. You make the decision to let them go. That's your decision. And that's where uh, a lot of um, Christian understanding, the Bible, of um, the situation in Egypt, uh, it's taught and must be written. It says, let my people go. But um, that that's Pharaoh made sent. the decision to let them go, but it actually says in the Hebrews he sent them away. He didn't have any choice in the matter. God put him in the place where he had been putting the people in a narrow place, and God put him in a narrow place. So he had no other choice than to send them away, and so he sent them away by like getting rid of them. He 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 couldn't cope anymore. So it wasn't his choice. He, okay, he made the choice to send them away, but he had no other choice. Yes, it because was like, he was pushed, it was pushed by God. And it's what we're going to see in the world more and more. We're going to see the hand of God. And all the world is going to see the hand of God. And at the end, the world, the, the kingdom of this world will be in his hand. And the Mashiach will come, the Messiah. So this is just, just amazing. The thing is, the goal of being free, that God is freeing us to be with him, is to serve him, is to be with him, is to enjoy his, him. And like I tell you, when you pray and you feel his presence, it's like he loves us so much. 
we don't deserve it, but he just loves us because he's like that. Which is again, I've learned in this book, like God organized, orchestrated, I would say, the coming out of the Hebrew people to go into the promised land, to receive the Torah. This was the end of it. It wasn't just the plagues. Because sometimes we think, oh, well, well, look at the plagues. No, the plagues were just like a tool to bring the people out. And then he was going to give the Torah, which was like his amazing gift. All right. And, and the thing is, um, I lost what I wanted to say. Um, Oh, I've, I, mean, I, I lost it. <laughs> it's okay. So, I mean, it's really a pattern for the last days. It's really yes. the, the, the coming out of Egypt of the Jewish people is a pattern for the last days that they had to come out of Egypt. They had to cross the Red Sea. They had to go across the desert. Uh, they had to receive the Torah, the Bible, and on Mount Sinai. Yes. And like so you, there, was a, there was a whole pattern. That's it. Uh, it isn't just one, one part of it. And that's it. And we, it was not just the plague. Mm. They were after in front of the Red Sea. Impossible. They couldn't do anything. And they say, we saw the plagues, but like, this is not enough now. That's it. We are going to die. And suddenly God opened the way. Again, it's like an old story. They had, to, they had to have miracles throughout the time. And uh, it's like the days we're living in. You need miracles throughout the time. Yeah. Well, it's been great to be uh, with you today. Thank you so much for joining us on the Israel First television program. Please support us. We need your financial support to enable us to continue. You can go to our donate page uh, on the website, which is www.israelfirst.org. Uh, there's a way to give us directly, um, uh, uh, safely and securely with credit cards. And also if you want to do, if you're in the UK or abroad by check, uh, there's a way to do that. Um, and it's because of your support, it's because of your financial support that we can come into your homes and bring you behind the scenes uh, what's really happening. And this road, as Natalie was saying, um, the road to redemption amen so thank you again for joining us today please write to us and let us know where you're watching in the world that'd be great to hear from you and remember with a program that looks at the land the people and the language